logistic regression is the topic at hand and SAS Studio really does a remarkable job doing everything we want it to do in a pretty simple command uh, kind of dialogue through drop down menus, believe it or not. So with respect to when to use logistic regression, you should remember it's gonna be when our outcome is a yes, no type outcome. And for an example, we have the new eSig data set uh, data file. So I'm gonna go ahead and import that. So there it is, there's our code. We have to then tell it to run it. Um, it's gonna replace work.import4 for me. So the code tells you right there, that's where it went. I can look at the output data and I can see it all there. So you have some familiarity with these variables already. And if we're going to try to predict the risk factors for ever used e-cigarettes in the last 30 days, um, we have to know that zero means no, one means yes. And when we use binary logistic regression, there are other types of logistic regression, by the way. There's, uh, you know, ordinal and multinomial logistic regression, but most logistic regression is zero or one, binary logistic regression. And this is multivariable uh, binary logistic regression we're going to be probably doing here in a second. So we've got the data imported in. We want to do binary logistic regression. So you may be interested in where it's at. So we have to click on task and utilities. And then within task and utilities, when you click on it, there was the option somewhere in there for uh, data graph map statistics. So you go into statistics and then there's an option for linear models. So we do linear models and then you go to binary logistic regression. The file we're going to use, it's going to be work.import4 because that's the one that I just imported for this purpose. If yours does not show up for whatever name it is that your file is, you can click on this little um, grid with the blue dot for select the table. And then you would go to wherever you imported it. Or if you brought it up and saved it somewhere else, you'll need to find it. So, But mine is work.import4, so it's right there. We're focusing on binary logistic regression, not uh, number of events and trials. Our response variable that we're interested in predicting may be e-cigarette use in the last 30 days. My variable of interest, if I were using Stata, would be one. But since SAS recodes it a certain way, we're gonna tell it that we're interested in zero. We're interested in zero. With respect to the actual function, we're using a logit model, not a probit model. There's a lot of similarities between them, but the logit's the one that uh, we can link up to the odds ratio. Explanatory variables. Our choices are class variables or continuous variables. Continuous variables are things like the new age variable. Age would be okay if it was coded properly in the data set. New age is all continuous numbers. Our classification variables could be like zero and one, or one and two, or one, two, three, and four, or um, low, medium, high. So our examples here, we have a rank variable that's improperly classified in the data set, but it's fixed in the variable called new rank. One being freshman, two sophomore, three junior, four senior. So we will select on new rank. I can bring it in individually. I can also select on multiple variables at the same time, possibly using the control key if you're on a PC, if you're on a Mac, using the command key. So I can click on female, ever Greek, ever in a, a military, ever smoking parents, do you have smoking parents or not? Family history of asthma, family history of cancer. Do you live off campus or on campus? Are you from Kentucky or an out-of-state student? Um, and then I can use non-smoker if I'm interested. I'll use, uh, you know, ever e-cigarette user we shouldn't use for predicting e-cigarette in the last 30 days. It's kind of the same thing. We'll pick on uh, smoker in the last 30 days. So that's a little different than e-cigarette use. And then we have a year variable. Y 2018. We also have a variable called under 22, yes or no. Um, 
you can't really use that or shouldn't use that when you've got an age variable and then another variable that really kind of is age. So if new age doesn't work well, we might look at adding that variable, but it's possible also that the rank of school year is also kind of doing the same thing. So we'll run this model with all these variables. So I'm gonna hit okay. They're all in there. Now, there are several things we need to go through here. First, the model. Well, we're gonna use a main effects model. We're not gonna look at all the interactions. Selection. We can tell it to do backward elimination for us one at a time. This is not investigator controlled, so I have my reservations, but you can still use it. Options. We can tell it we want default statistics and additional statistics. I'm particularly interested in a goodness of fit test. Hosmer Lemma Shaw goodness of fit test. Also, for plots, I want default plot plots and additional plots. We want to look at the odds ratio plot and the ROC plot. I'm not clicking on zero to two. I'm not interested in that. Those are everything that I think we need. Output would tell us if we want to save like our residuals or something somewhere. Um, we could do that, but that's everything we need. We have all the information we need in our code. Here is the big code. You could copy that if you ever wanted to uh, and paste it somewhere. So it's all right there. All through drop down menus, pointing and clicking and so forth. I can now hit the running guy and let's see what happens. So we get this output and I'm gonna zoom in on it so you can see it better. You can even click on this and it occupies more of the screen. So our model information, that's there. 1,046 observations read. We only had complete data for all those variables on 894 of the 1,046. Probably model is eSig 30 days equals zero. We have all these different class variables. Model fit diagnostics and so forth. This is the global null hypothesis. This is, is our overall model statistically significant, yes or no? This is a residual chi-square test on our model residuals. I'm not so much interested in that. Model fit statistics. Total global null hypothesis. So more residual stuff. Step three, cancer is removed. So it's actually showing you all the different models with the removal of various variables. Summary of backward elimination. It's showing you that off campus was the first variable removed. Then it removed new rank second. Then it removed cancer third. Then it removed military fourth. Then it removed asthma fifth. Because every iteration it ran the model, those had p values that did not meet our 0 0.05 significance criteria. That was all through that particular command where we had the selection. It did all that backward elimination for you or for us. Continuing on, once it did all of it, here's what's left. Year, female, ever Greek, smoking parents, Kentucky, smoker 30, new age. All those terms are statistically significant and they're all below 0 0.05, so. Here, it's giving us the maximum likelihood estimates. This is our beta value. And then these are our references. So they could be 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, but it just shows you a zero. The year 2014, here's its coefficient. These are all significant terms. Now we know the odds ratio is 
the e or exponent to the 1.161 power there. We may not be as interested in these unless we're reporting them in a table for a scientific paper. The odds ratio estimates, on the other hand, are likely what you're interested in the most. And they are here. So 2014 versus 2018. The odds ratio is 3.209. The odds of being an e-cigarette user in 2014 versus 2018. So in 2018, the odds of being an e-cigarette user are 3.2 times greater. Female. Their odds are 0 0.585. So that's a 41.5% reduced odds of being an e-cigarette user compared to a guy. Greek versus non-Greek, 3.1. So the odds of being an e-cigarette user are 3.1 times greater for them. Smoking parents, one versus zero, zero versus one. The odds of being a e-cigarette user are 1.5 times greater if you had a smoking parent or 55% greater if you've had one or two smoking parents. Or Kentucky zero versus one. If you're not a state student, your odds of being an e-cigarette user were higher. So if you're a Kentucky student, your odds are lower, 49.5%. If you're a smoker in the last 30 days, your odds of also using e-cigarettes are 15.9 times greater. And then age. For every one year increase in age of the participant, the odds of being an e-cigarette user went up 1.147 or 14.7%. All of these odds ratios are associated with confidence intervals that do not cross one. If you need to visually see that, it provides that in this kind of forest plot looking diagram here. So we can see one denoted by that line. The scale is way off for us to see because the impact of that being a smoker variable. The ROC curve. How effective is this model at predicting the likelihood somebody is an e-cigarette user? By comparing the sensitivity, the ability to detect positive personnel or persons against one minus the specificity. And we see 0.8217, so way better than 0.7. Um, it's in that good range, good to excellent range. Here are all the different ROC curves from the different model building steps. And you can see step zero started off at 82. Model at the final product was 82.17 or 0.8217. So overall, those removals of those variables did not hurt our, our ROC curve analysis. The Lemma Shaw test, Hosmer Lemma Shaw goodness of fit test, it compares what we observed in our data for e-cigarette users or non-e-cigarette users and e-cigarette users. What did we observe versus what does the model predict across, in this case, 10 deciles of risk. 10 being, if you meet all the criteria to be in 10, you're the highest risk user group. And the model observed 46 people in that decile of 48 people, well, the survey observed 46 not being, actually I got my interpretation backwards there. Um, one is the highest risk group, 10 is the lowest risk group. So there were 91 people in this risk group. The model expected 66 of the 91, or not the model, we observed in the actual paper survey, 66 of 91 people being e-cigarette users. The model expected 67, so it was close. For risk group two, 40 people were identified through the surveys to be e-cigarette users. The model expected 41. On the other side, 52 were expected not to be e-cigarette users. The model identified 51.04. So across this kind of contingency table here, the p-value for the chi-square test on this table is 0 0.6799, meaning there is no statistically significant difference between the observed values and the expected values produced by the model. 
indicating that the model has good fit. We wouldn't want our expected model or expected values from our model to be different than our observed values. So we have a good fit there. If you wanted to look at influential diagnostics, they're here. More advanced uh, analysis would be required, um, you know, if you really want to get into looking at these outliers and trying to figure out who they are. So pretty easy actually to walk through and do. So here we are, we've got an entire logistic regression. It did backward elimination for us. It produced the goodness of fit results. It gave us the odds ratios. It gave us the area under the ROC curve. So uh, really powerful stuff here. And um, you know, it was free. So it didn't cost you anything for the program. Just a little bit of labor. And uh, hopefully all of this has been helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and it's been an absolute pleasure.